into positions of hopelessness and helplessness. The government gives them the drugs, builds bigger prisons, passes a three-strike law, and then wants us to sing God Bless America. No, no. Damn America, ca, ca, California episode. Alex, what's up, Patek? East Coast Alex, and I'm here to say hello on the podcast today. Andrews, rapping Lee, bienvenidos. California style Lee here. Cal- Cali Durs in the house. Cali Durs. Yeah, it's uh, Andrews Calabanga. with a bunch of rice and guacamole and shit on it. <laughs> oh. that's like a burrito joke hi i'm jake uh let's talk about fire man fucking world's on fire right now as many of us know by now there's just big ass fire raging in the in the west coast everything's orange you've seen all the pictures everything's just red or orange everyone's made all the jokes it looks like blade runner it looks, like it, looks like Blade Runner. it looks like Blade Runner. Um, and as we probably know, one of the stories of how a fire started was that a gender reveal party happened because some fucking bougie asshole decided to do a gender reveal. Gender reveals are like a common thing people like to make fun of on Twitter because it's just like, you know, breeders, I guess, are very like uh, obnoxious. You know, just like, oh, these fucking rich people with their, you own a house and you're you feel like um your your social media presence should be you just sort of expressing like your quaint little life that's where it comes from i think and uh there's two things it's the people who have babies which the anti-social twitter people are like i don't like that and then the people have to make a statement about gender yeah right it's like double the kind diabolical of cross yeah because it's because because uh internet is not your world gender people it's for you know it's for people who fight the the gender binary right so it's annoying you're like blue and pink well uh gender reveal um maybe it's not you know your thing didn't turn out to be blue or pink you're it's orange your baby's the president he's donald trump bitch that's your worst nightmare I feel like it should be a gendered debate because I don't I don't know how you could be that conclusive with just a sonar, you know, sonogram or whatever they're called. Like, and I was told this sonar. when I was a baby, there was a debate uh, in the sonar room, sonogram room <laughs> oh, about no. whether my penis was a penis or not. They were like, I think that's just a speck. I think that's uh, how to how to fucking eggplant get in there. You know, that that must be a penis. Like there was that that debate was not resolved really until I came uh, rushing out of the womb. Yeah, well, there's still a debate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm Anders Father here live in the sonar room. I like the (laughs) idea that the doctor (laughs) is a dolphin and that they're like, you know, squeaking at the woman's stomach. And then they detect, oh, that part of that echo located back, it sounded like it was off of a what might be a dick, right? depending if we even understand that to you know to me they are the the most intelligent mammal actually maybe not the most intelligent but they are very intelligent they no, are the, the most, most intelligent, intelligent mammal. Let's be mammal. yeah they are smarter than us yeah no doubt about i have it. to take your word for this because of your extensive aqua marine background <laughs> marine biology is what it's called <laughs> i know that much um did you see that documentary on netflix of that man who falls in love with an octopus I've oh. heard about it. Yeah, I've heard that apparently octopi, octopuses, apparently that's not actually clear whether or not what the plural is there. But uh, <laughs> they... That's another debate. Yeah. That's another one, yeah. These should just be debates. And we should you should debate <laughs> the baby's future, what its occupation is, what its proclivities will be. Uh, you know, don't just, don't be so decisive and definitive about what this baby's future is. Just yelling. There should be at more your, committees. Your wife's yeah. stomach. You're just like, come out here and debate me, you coward. <laughs> <laughs> Prove me wrong. Show feet, baby. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but Octop- Octopi, when they show feet, they're also showing brain because apparently they have like a brain <laughs> in every tentacle and their main brain is just like organizing all the information they're getting in from eight places at once. It's crazy. Like they're basically aliens. Yeah. You know, I hate to be this guy, but I spent like eight months of the last year working on my octopus material and America's <laughs> audiences did not care for it. And yet here we are. <laughs> Just one year later, six months inside, all of a sudden we're all octopus heads. Everybody's got to know about the biology of an octopus now that it's no longer Alex's big thing. It doesn't feel good, man. It's not. It's weird. It's to. I just used Pepe the Frog's slogan, but it. Uh, but it's. It doesn't make any the sense. Hardest mammals, Pepe the Frog. I thought that we had basically figured out like marine animals and shit like that and then just like last year we started learning new shit about octopus i thought we just had them for like decades now just sitting in tanks and stuff i don't know they could change Aren't colors you? have you seen that shit oh i've seen it or do I've your seen eyes the full just change fucking retina or whatever yeah it's cool if you guys haven't seen it i don't want to spoil it for you but i will say this octopuses live a dangerous life they do yeah have you ever seen the movie octopussy James big, Bond. Big fan of the title of the film, but I don't think I've ever sat down and watched it because it seems kind of boring. Is it about anything other than James Bond having sex with eight ladies? Like uh, what, what else could that be a pun on? No, it's the woman's name is Octopussy. There's one woman who's She's named Octopussy. Green, yeah. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> She's not not to be confused with Octo Mom. Different person. Different woman. Although, well, she leads. She's like has a cult. Uh, her name is yeah Octopussy. I think like what's her first name? Magda or something. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it's like a Cold War, sure. like a lot of James Bond stuff. It's very Cold War oriented. Yeah, they're making fun of the like ridiculous, you know, theater of the Cold War and the spies and code names and stuff. Right. Well, they're not really Which making is- fun of it. They're just celebrating it it's different <laughs> no 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 the original ian fleming novels were like i think they're kind of like a satire they're like a joke that's why james bond shit is so weird when like the new mm-hmm. movies come out and everyone's like this is like a, a film achievement these are supposed to be comedies but somehow they got turned into like this fucking high level like oh who gets to be the next james bond it should be idris elba that would be so progressive it's like this is basically Austin Powers, but we put a lot of production into it and made it like kind of more serious. It's the the cultural debate uh, high schoolers have watching an alcoholic versus adults have watching an alcoholic of like, isn't this the coolest guy you've ever seen? <laughs> right. Yeah. Or well, I'm, I re- I'm sorry he lives this way. I rewatched Goldeneye recently, which is very interesting retrospect because it's like I think the first post cold war james bond but the movie's thesis is basically that the cold war isn't over because there are still factions in russia who want global dominant dominance they're not necessarily concerned with the the communism stuff they just want you know hege- hegemony and so they are uh, occupied love, preoccupied with getting that story yeah I love yeah that it is on msnbc right now I was gonna say. right and well it's it's funny because they didn't even bother like a lot of like sci-fi action stuff in the 90s was just like I, I don't know i guess we don't have an enemy right now let's do aliens but james bond was like nope we're sticking with the russians the Cold War's <laughs> over we don't care wow maybe we can get the resistance libs to play the video game goldeneye <laughs> and that will distract them because they will fall in love with its various themes uh-huh you know, they do all of the, all the dossiers and stuff like that. Right. And it's yeah, that's basically I feel like, yeah, that's what the whole Mueller investigation has been is like that maze level where you're picking up different. Yeah, no documents. No, and- actually, this doesn't work because the next thing that they're going to blame everything on is China and and odd job. Odd I job, know he's yeah. not. Is he? Chi- I, I don't know exactly where his background is, but they're they hate. They're going to hate odd job. As soon as you get these old they're ladies to start playing job. Goldeneye, they're going to be furious about odd job. And then it's just going to turn into more propaganda. They're, they're going to say, but don't you see? Because this is the first thing I thought of when you said Goldeneye. The Republicans are playing as odd job, and it's not fair. <laughs> yeah, they're He's, ducking the regulations. You uh-huh. shoot low hitboxes. Goes right over his head. 
<laughs> that would be a great I would love to watch like a senatorial hearing about like some mission and odd job is has like killed a bunch of MI6 and CIA agents. And there's like some Republican center like you telling me that that little man was able to <laughs> dodge bullets and kill a James Bond. I don't believe it. <laughs> How big is the square required to shoot a bullet into his body? <laughs> it's yeah. simply not balanced game making. Right. Now that is one magic fist. I'm trying to think of a, a play on the magic bullet. Magic slapper. Magic slapper. Thank you. Yeah, that's what they called hands in GoldenEye. When you were just because you would karate chop people if you didn't have a gun. Right, and if you wanted did to, did Jaws well, bite people, or did they? Did I make that up? No, he bit yeah, people he in the movie. He movies. had braces. He had what's that? In the movies, he bit people. Right. Yeah. 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 There was no game integration for a melee chomp attack. No, it was pretty stupid because the get like in the game he had the jaws. You could he had this metal thing on his face. You could sort of see it, just bad animation or whatever, but you could see it. We didn't use it at all. So you're just like, what? if you didn't, if we weren't familiar with the movies, we're just like, why is this guy's like fucking chin like silver? <laughs> yeah, his his origin is he does not want you to look at his orthodontist or his orthodonture on his face. Yeah. And then Baron Samedi was also very badly explained and he wore a top hat. And if you shot him in like the top hat, he'd fucking die because <laughs> he had was a massive brain. His, his head. Like, he was like a cone head. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just like Abraham Lincoln, so he died. <laughs> John Wilkes Booth was trying to shoot him through the top of his hat like a joke. Didn't realize Abraham Lincoln's <laughs> head is actually a long cylinder that goes all the way up through the hat, which is why he had to wear that hat. Right. Yeah, and so that's the what the Lincoln we're Project here is that if you're wearing the hat, your head fills the whole hat. Right, and that's, else would you? That's the Lincoln Project. That's the project. <laughs> <laughs> like our brains are so massive the republican party no longer tolerates them we must get a series of hats we must find a new host <laughs> yeah i distinctly remember what's that they're cone heads yeah cone heads. yeah they're cone heads i Rangers distinctly remember heads. playing golden eye at my friend's house who was russian and so I always associate the game with like him yelling back and forth with his mom in Russian. Mm. Um, so is that where your love of the the Russian people began? Yeah, that's that how when I you got, decided you were going to work. On that's Russian how TV? I got hired. I was like, I have many fond memories of your people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would I don't I forget if I've told this story on the pod before, but we would swear around each other and his mom didn't speak English. Cool. So she, she didn't know. Yeah. But she knew shut up. So we could be like, you fucking dick bag and or like fuck you, you motherfucker, shut up. And then she'd be like, excuse me, do not say shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Anders, I don't want you swearing. Okay. I'll stop. There's it like, goes against your image as a gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> There's like prop yeah. Russian propaganda posters all over the house with like the person with the shush sh thing going on. <laughs> says, yeah, like the, the anti-German thing where he's denying the drink, but it's just yeah. a guy about to swear and he's like, no, thanks. Do not say shut up. <laughs> Calm <laughs> red. Do not say shut up. We yeah, do not. We do not say shut up. up. Just put a finger over your lips like that. That's sufficient. Yeah. Um, well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's talk about these wildfires. The West Coast a is bit. on fire. <laughs> the reason that they're kind of a topic of debate right now, even though this has been going on for a week or two, is that uh, Joe Rogan decided to uh, have on uh, Douglas Murray onto his show. He does three shows a day. There's people are going to get in there, just wild, crazy people. And uh, so he got in trouble this week for he get in trouble. That's such a bad way of putting it. Um, he basically parroted a conspiracy theory. The conspiracy theory is that the fires are being started by, I mean, guess who? Fucking Antifa. Anytime there's a, you know, a thing to blame on anything now, right? There's this just fucking Don Quixote windmill situation with conservatives. And uh, yeah, it's Antifa, right? And there's yeah. no actual evidence of this. Uh, there's basically 
this one story that went a little viral, which is that some police arrested like a guy, like a mentally ill person who uh, he started to fire like. I think they're trying to make it seem like he used a Molotov cocktail, but it's just a crazy person. So he got out of jail and he like did it again or something. But I think he's a homeless person who's like, nice. I, I don't even know what the story is, but it's like the narrative that it's Antifa because he threw a Molotov cocktail at the woods, which didn't happen. Like, I think he just accidentally knocked something <laughs> over. They're trying to paint this image that like, <laughs> that like anti anti fascists and shit are like, using anti-fascist tools and shit so they're like we got to make molotov cocktails and throw them at the forest <laughs> like you wouldn't <laughs> just use a lighter or something it's so fucking I'm stupid nailing a deer with a brick yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean that would be an example of their strategy not quite seeing the forest for the trees oh uh, hello oh uh, also okay. relevant, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. fascism, right, shares a root word, fascis, with another cool word, but we won't like get into that. Um, that too. <laughs> uh, but fascis is, it means a bundle of sticks, right? Which is why sometimes really, really old fascist, like, political literature and stuff, you'll see, like, the fuck a flag with a bundle of sticks before they have the swastika and all that shit. Um, <laughs> and also, the, another cool word comes from this, right? But, wait, wait, wait. Does... <laughs> Are you so? Is there a chance when you call someone the f the f slur? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's that's just, like you're doing anti-fascism. It's the same root word. It's literally where that oh, comes no. from. Like we learned on the Louis episode. <laughs> Remember <laughs> where they're saying the reason that they call people that is because it's a bundle of sticks and you would light them on fire and stuff, and so it means you're an expendable person, right? This is also why uh, cigarettes. Yeah, makes are right, called yeah, that yeah, yeah. because it's a fucking bundle of cigarettes. Yeah, all of these things share a root word, right? So here's my point: that's of course anti-fascists are against the woods. What is the woods? It's the biggest bundle of sticks it's of all. The most sticks. sticks. Yep. Yeah, that's what they're against more than anything. They hate it, folks. They hate it. They <laughs> hate it. <laughs> Who is the sticks this, got uh... too big? <laughs> now they gotta burn them down. <laughs> Who is this Douglas Murray guy? I'm not familiar with him. Oh fuck! I can't remember. I was reading some bullshit about him the other day. He uh, he wrote Hitchhiker's Guide. Yeah, he's <laughs> Douglas Adams. <laughs> Yo, it is it is very funny to come Joe, down on, uh, on Joe, uh, Rogan. Joe Rogan for being inaccurate on air when our show is like, yeah, I think the bundle of sticks is fascist. No, 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 no. That part I know. I I read a book about that. The I don't remember who Douglas Murray is specifically, but he okay. Listen. So well, and now I'm just thinking of Joe Rogan interviewing Douglas Adams and just being like, wait, so you're telling me that like there's a hitchhiker who goes through outer space and that certain planets have fucking aliens on just like actually thinking it's a real book and not getting green. Why has he got such a big tongue? <laughs> <laughs> What's he need that big tongue for? Is that part of it? Do you guys remember that? The old copy of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy with the with the thumb right on the front. No, no. Well, there's an old copy of it from like when it first came out and I had one and it's like the hitchhiking thumb. But if you cover the thumb, they very purposely drew it to look like a big, juicy ass. <laughs> Provided, you know, me and the me and the boys with a lot of content. What, if you know what type I mean, of the advertising is that subliminal? <laughs> How would you? <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, why bother? <laughs> what's what's the point? It's subliminal because people I mean, it's love like assholes. Disney animators sneaking in the the sex and the different Little Mermaids or whatever. You know, they like they're naughty. They have they are naughty, big, crazy minds. Yeah. I was reading the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy one time when I was working somewhere at a bar. And like nice. the book is full of like coincidences and synchronicities and stuff like that. Right. And yeah. a guy was playing trivia on his phone and he was trying to figure out the answer to this question that was like this sci-fi novel that was written by Douglas Adams. Da, 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 da. And he looked he like he didn't get it. His friend was like, ah, I can't remember it. And I was standing right in front of him holding the book because I was reading it. And if he had looked up like a millimeter, he would have seen the answer to the it was really fucking weird, and I was like, Whoa. "I was like, dude, the book is about this," and then he uh, left and didn't pay me very much. But it was cool. It was like a weird, like, "Oh, the universe is so big but so small" moment. And his tab was forty two dollars. Yeah, 
it time wasn't. and space working against this man winning <laughs> trivia. I did, I learned another interesting thing about uh, this week because I was like um, talking about Joe Rogan. I was just on Twitter, fucking watching TV and stuff. Um, <clears throat> on a tweet storm, uh, people tweet always storm. people always think you're like raging when you're on Twitter. It's just I'm hungover and watching TV, and it's just a fucking thing that's like you know. So I was tweeting, I was talking about Joe Rogan. I was like, "What's the fucking deal with this guy? How does he get like this?" And I came up with this question that that was kind of interesting. Was it does he actually read? Because he podcasts like nine hours a day, and he works out and all this stuff, and he talks about all this shit, but he never seems to really like have. Um, you know, integrated it into his worldview at all. And I was listening to an episode of his show to try to figure out something related to something else that I was working on and stuff. Because he's were doing t- Joe Rogan research. Yeah, and uh, I was just like, man, this guy's like dumb as rocks. And someone responded to me, and they were like, "Actually, he's good, sir. Have you never heard of the Joe Rogan Experience Library?" And they linked me to this website, <laughs> which is. Someone listens to every episode of the Joe it's Rogan just experience. every book that had a cover that looks like an ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Categorized for you. So there's someone who listens to the Joe Rogan experience, and in every episode, what they do is they uh, link to, they create a database where they link to every book that is referenced on the show, but not necessarily read. So it's just like yeah. anyone who... The Bible comes up fucking like every other episode because someone has just mentioned something related to the Bible or whatever. So it's like kind of a farce because it's like this is not it looks like, wow, look how well read the people who make this show is. They read 10 fucking books every day or whatever to make the show. It's it's very much not a lot of books like anyone who references anything from anything. We constantly reference books on this show that none of us have read. Yeah, and there's a very it's, there's a tact to uh, referencing it without explicitly say saying if you've read it or not that um, you know you you master as a podcaster. That's Just a like, lot like the power broker. Yeah, um, he read <laughs> it is a book. Books. That's a book it's long about a thing. Yeah, you can't really understand books until you've read that book. <laughs> right. Yeah, not that I have or have not, but that's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like w- just getting your information from. Joe Rogan, which a lot of people do. I saw some video of a guy was being quizzed about like quotes from the Joe Rogan experience, and he could just like name exactly what episode and guest it was from or whatever. It was like a it's, New York taxi video or something. What are you watching? Something like that. It was like a, it was this guy like being, it was some game where he gets punched if he gets it wrong or something like that. But he, uh, but that's, just it's like Wikipedia. Head. You know, there's just a ton of information because it's hours and hours of content with a lot of different people. But it's not necess- you're not necessarily deter- finding any way to, like, determine what is good information or like any way. Of well, that's what's wild about this is that the media itself has the same problem. There's a question yeah. of the responsibility of media here. And it's like it's not necessarily like a verifiable you know, check going on at cable news either. So it's not. When you look at this, you go, this is fucking scary. This one guy who doesn't even claim to be very intellectual or have an authority on anything just blew up and became like a huge source of alternative media. Uh, it, it's a weird situation because you kind of want to go like, Jesus Christ, what if he says the wrong thing? But then, you know, that that also... You look at the hundreds of people whose full salaries are dependent on saying the right thing, just make up lies that benefit corporations as their job. Right. And there's no fucking difference. And, and he's, you just, he's weird because watch he... Watch Octopussy he, for the fourth time. <laughs> like, you watch cable news and you know who their evil overlords are and why the message that they're sending sounds a certain way. But with him, it doesn't really seem like he really is controlled by anyone. And he seems very dumb and very genuinely curious. So it's more like there's just like a baby with like a whole, but it's like a giant. And you're like, dear Lord, is it going to smash us with a block at some point? Because if it decides to, (laughs) you know, if it doesn't care about anything. So like, it's weird because, you know, you don't really want to antagonize the guy because it's like, he he does he doesn't really seem to be intentionally platforming all these like fascists and shit. It's just that he's a rich white Could guy. A baby platform a fascist? <laughs> Would you be mad at a baby for having Jordan Peterson on to explain skull shapes? Do I think I mean, a, a baby could? How plat- many sticks could a baby pick up? That's, That's exactly where I'm going. Yeah, there are games based around this idea. Babies should not have cigarettes, so maybe true not. Huh? Um. 
Read a book, baby. <laughs> but anyway, every once in a while, you you know, you know find out, because I fucking, God, so many people listen to the show. I've had so many, I've had like so many roommates that listen to it and then like don't even understand that like sometimes people on the show are like, yeah, I talked to that person like a week ago. They're just like, no, you're shut up. Like your, your thing's not real. <laughs> it's very funny, right. but they listen to this fucking thing like it, like it's, uh, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's just a fucking... It's just on like a d- level of definition. He has so much power, and it's really frustrating when when you get into like tiny groups of people who get really upset at Joe Rogan because Joe Rogan is just like a phenomenon. Somebody is going to be in this spot where they have this giant audience, and they're going to do with it whatever they will. And if we had weird anarcho communist Joe Rogan, it would be great. But we don't. We just have the guy who has on like uh, 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 UFC fighters who have lost control of their memories and brains <laughs> and are using it to destroy human civilization. Yeah. Well, I think what's going on with him is that, I mean, the UFC fighter thing, like fine, whatever, you know, some of his stuff is just genuinely like kind of, it's a curious guy. He wants to hear somebody talk about fucking mushrooms or whatever. But I think what ha- started happening is that there's a systemic problem of like interest because, I was just listening to him the other day, and I was like, how's this guy have, he does so much DMT or whatever, and he thinks of himself as this, like, fucking uh, cosmonaut or whatever, or what's the word, fucking, uh, you know, when you're, like, a brain, uh, oh, psychonaut. Psychonaut. psychonaut, there you go. Psycho- uh, boom. Yeah, it's like a term that all those fucking people use to describe what they're doing, expanding their minds or whatever, and yet he's still a book, Anders. very much inside of the paradigm of capitalism, and... You know, that's a thing that feels psychonaut ish when you like figure out the walls on it and go outside of it, right? So that could easily be something that this, that this person kind of gets into. Right. But the reason they did You watch that Duncan Trestle show. Right. That's how they view themselves. They're like, I'm exploring time and space. It's like, you're just interviewing entrepreneurs. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the, the systemic reason why it's entrepreneurs over and over and over again is because the people that come into contact with someone like Joe Rogan are other rich white people who then are in a position, whether it be, comes from their inner world or not, just from a, a, a not a nature, but a nurture like position you know as we understand as marxists they have like incentives when they're rich white people in america to then have conservative leaning politics that justify their place in the world and antagonize things that threaten them and stuff right and so that's how you end up with this seemingly neutral thing that continues to platform you know pretty stupid ideas and sometimes pretty dangerous ones and to his credit today enough people and i suspect it was because comedians called him out because like martha kelly like friend of mine and austin Dave Anthony, people that are respected in the comedy world eventually saw this thing going on. I mean, like, fucking Joe, shut the fuck up. And then he fucking, to his credit, he said, hey, I looked into it and I was wrong and I issued a oh, correction. Oh, I made up that stuff about Antifa st- starting <laughs> fires. I guess you shouldn't have killed those four people yeah. an hour after my episode went up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so much power. And like, right it's it's funny because his own reply guys now are like don't give in to the mob but it's like but you're the mob now he changed his mind you're asking him to change right so it's right. fucking stupid and you look at that and you realize okay th- those people are reactionary they're not just anti-mob they have only like a one type of mob um but what's interesting about this particular boogeyman of the fucking antifa's burning your forest down is um it has existed for hundreds of years uh, we did an episode with Bunta Vista, our friends in Australia, back in January. I looked this up. It was in January. I thought it was Thanks. last year, but it was in January because this year's been so long, uh, where it was summer for them at the time because they're in Australia. And if you remember, there were all these fucking fires happening because of climate change, but all of the right-wing media down there was blaming it on this, this spree of just random arsonists that they made up, right? right? Same and, fucking and- thing. I feel like it's easy to forget. It wasn't just a lot of fires. A third of Australia was on fire. (laughs) Even more than the amount of fire we have in California. A third of a continent just in flames. And it was crazy at the time because I remember freaking out and tweeting about 24-7. And nobody in America really cared that much. 
There yeah. was not like a lot of interest in it. And then it happened here six months later. And people were like, this is nuts. This has to be the work of, you know, the anti-fascists who are the real Nazis, who are a secret organization of ninjas that didn't exist until five years ago. Instead of <laughs> fucking it's climate change. The gender queers are behind this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny because like. Uh, you know, sometimes groups do take credit for shit like this. Like I remember in the mid two thousands, <laughs> there were wildfires in uh, I think it was California, and someone asked like an Al Qaeda higher up, like, "Are you guys responsible for this?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're we're going out there, we're setting those fires. That's us, definitely, hundred <laughs> percent." Yeah, uh, with Molotov cocktails. <laughs> that was yeah. ISIS's thing, is that they would love to take credit for just everything that happened, which is a really funny move for like a terrorist organization. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah, you know how they you know how they uh they saw the heads of trees off? Sound familiar, right? <laughs> <laughs> Put a little orange jumpsuit on the tree. You know what? If you're gonna go ahead and execute any infidels you find, that's one thing. But when you start chasing clout that way, I cannot fuck with you anymore. <laughs> you cannot just clout claim a fire you didn't start um right. but yeah i want to talk about this like kind of uh scapegoat historically because it's kind of interesting and i was reading today about it and didn't realize how on the nose the history would be but basically fucking 100 years ago they used to do this with wobblies because fucking iww members were the people in the pacific northwest who were organizing and striking against uh these huge lumber corporations and so what would happen is the lumber corporations would make people uh, work in uh conditions that were unsafe because when it gets too hot outside and you're operating turn of the century fucking lumber machinery sparks fly off and they start wildfires so there were like fucking 1600 wildfires a year compared to the you know the this is a hard to quantify a thing because it spreads and then that's one fire but there, we've only had like up 700 or something this year um so there were like a shit ton of fires around uh the time of the wobblies back in the you know the 1910s and what they would do is fucking blame wobblies it was the same goddamn thing and uh why, you know why were they blaming the wobblies because it was a made-up leftist scapegoat who was threatening their capital interests and so what they said was that these like these scary you know fucking people that are talking about overthrowing the government and stuff are uh you know, are, are, are they're starting these fires to terrorize local towns and shit. Mm -hmm. And so they would say, like, you know, the, all the more reason to be, you know, supportive of the company and all this shit, right? So yeah. It's the exact well, this same story. Back around the time of the general strike in Seattle where they just, like, shut down the city for, like, a fucking week or something and were, like, running it and had their own, like, food shit set up and, like, everybody was digging it and then it just got like crushed by the government and they, they yeah they freaked out they needed to find out uh in any way how they can like defeat this on a like a pr level on an infrastructural level so they're just like throwing everything everything they could at uh subversives and anarchists and wobblies it's it's perfect 50 percent it may it makes 50 percent of sense in such a beautiful way that I wish it didn't endanger so many activists' lives because the rationale is, oh, so you got these radical lefty types, you got these wobblies, you got these Antifa. They, what do they hate? Society, right? They want to bring down society. Okay. So yeah. who do you think is burning down trees? The foundation of everything <laughs> we hold dear. <laughs> so... Uh, Does not make any sense. To kind of draw a through line here to make it seem like a little bit more clear as to why the motivations would always find a leftist scapegoat like this. Um, you can look at some similar stories going through the 1930s where they, uh, you know, the Wobblies are kind of on decline at that point. They start blaming the Communist Party. And in the 60s, anti-war protests. And in the 80s, uh, they started blaming Earth first. <laughs> and then uh you know and then everyone was a fucking blob for a while and nothing was very political for a while and then oh my god antifa again right and so um that goddamn avalanche terrorist group <laughs> yeah they're out there burning down our forests. they got the guy with the gun arm <laughs> i mean well yeah in the 90s there was like this especially around like the northwest this really militant environmentalist movement that was like chaining themselves to trees and stuff, but they were not setting forest fires themselves. Like it just, 
well, counterintuitive. The- I mean, there are some environmentalists who do like control burns and stuff, but like, yeah, not on a, a massive scale. Which is part of the reason we have the massive fire now is the government doesn't do any control burns. And yeah. then you get a brush fire that just lights the entire West Coast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do a controlled burn. You know what I'm saying? What does that mean? I can't fucking if get high, smoking, dude. Smoking some, oh, smoking okay. some weed. Okay. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. I don't actually. I'm, I'm it cool. gives me I'm cool. debilitating panic attacks. But I wish I wish I could be a stone stoner guy. It sounds fun. I've never smoked weed. I think it's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> that can't be true. All right. But I will not tarnish your good image on our podcast. Keep it clean. <clears throat> Um, yeah, Russian poster, but it says no weed. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, the, what we were talking about 10 minutes ago with, um, with the, uh, Joe Rogan media responsibility thing and how he's kind of just, a uh, a, a thoughtless, uh, drifter who happens to like be in this position of power in his class interest does segue really nicely into another thing we wanted to talk about this week, which was the, uh, Biden campaign's new angle uh, to attract voters for the election, which is that this election is Scranton, Pennsylvania versus Park Ave. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, Who would win? Which seems like, I mean, it's just a papering over of the Bernie Sanders, like Wall Street versus everything thing, but like well, it's, a more generalized version of it. Well, it's the last in 2008. I remember the big thing was Main Street versus Wall Street, um, but it was Park Ave versus Madison Ave, <laughs> Sesame Street versus Avenue Q, yeah. Gate Street versus DeGraw. But it was like, <laughs> I think I can't remember if it was versus actually. I think it may have been what some of the commentators now are saying, which is we need a, a government that works for Wall Street and Main Street. Right. And this is what I wanted to talk about is the big clip that's going around of uh, MSNBC hostess saying, I don't know. I live near Park Ave and I think there's some nice stuff on there. Does Joe Biden not want me to be the president to have in America for me? This is like they're the. I'm sorry. You go. I was just going to say, it's so weird that it's coming out of like MSNBC because I thought they liked Biden. Well, they just it's even this is a bridge too far to, to any this like any kind of class <laughs> politics. They see mentioning as the populist bridge, bridge too far. Yeah, they see <laughs> it as, you know, like totally yeah, leading to a class war. And this is sort of with the era of era of Trump, because that rhetoric, I think, if I remember correctly, was a little more acceptable in Democratic circles during the Bush administration uh, post 2008. You know, it's a, it's all right to have a little class dialectic there because there was no significant faction of the Democratic Party or base that actually wanted serious redistribution. Now you have Trump in the zeitgeist and it's much easier to conflate populisms, uh, so-called of, you know, right wing um, division based on, you know, ethnicity and, and so forth. It's easy Without to conflate that with class. Into, like- Right. Without even getting into the the party realism of it and the dynamics of who's in control of the party, this is just a rich woman on TV who's like, I'm sorry, isn't this, aren't I part of the solution? (laughs) I don't understand. I make six figures talking on TV. I don't understand why you're mad at me. (laughs) Well, it's it's like the Buttigieg thing, you know, where he was saying, like, we need a campaign of inclusion, in response to Bernie, you know, invading against billionaires as if billionaires are a significant, uh, you know, percentage of the population. Let I mean, alone the we have a population. We have a, f- a phrase for this. They're literally one percent, which is yeah, why it's right. not a democratic thing to include their interests in a way that would make them con- conceived of as more than that right right i guess they're an isolated minority and we have to protect them (laughs) yeah what uh i guess what's so funny about looking at stuff like this is like soledad o'brien was one of the people who who was defending park street and saying it's nice i live there what's what's the problem with it and uh you know she's somebody who you look at on twitter and she's like 
it's really stupid and you dunk on her all the time and stuff. And there's always this question of like, how many of these people are evil and how many of them are stupid? And the answer here is that this is a, I think this is a stupid perspective because uh, it would probably do Biden a lot better in terms of his own interest in the campaign to pretend like he's like this big populist or whatever, but right. they're like, no, 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 no. Like th these, me and my friends are, you know, don't antagonize us. And like, those people should be shutting up and pretending like they're, you know, right, they're right, right. They're supposed to be manufacturing consent, but it's along the lines of the elite class. So there is no consensus there because the Republican Democrat parties provide the same things for them. So there's two things at work here. One is you have just a, uh, a penguin brained lady on TV being like Park Ave. That's a nice street. I live there. And the other thing is the machine carefully built up by the media class over the primary to shut down anyone who brought up any kind of class divide as some kind of divider, uh, forgetting that they're supposed to prop up the Biden campaign because that's the one they decided they like. Well, the, and they're also, you know, MSNBC is home to a lot of never Trumpers and their project right now is to take over and remake the Democratic Party in their image. And this is part of that. They got it. They for yeah. sure just have it already. They're trying to make our heads long and tall to fit inside of those hats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but part of what they're trying to do is get class politics out of the Democratic Party, which would mean it would, would be great for them. It would be out, would be away, be out of both major parties, really. You know, Republicans kind of have it rhetorically, but they're not serious about it. Um, that's their mission. And this is this is part of that, putting pressure on them. I don't know if it's actually going to lead to the Biden campaign making any changes. It could be. Um, well, that's what's so funny about this. Like, are you really worried Joe Biden's going to come crack down on you, Soledad O'Brien? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. The best thing we could hope for is that he starts, you know, saying he's going to do more stuff for the next two months. Uh, you know, just the other night he said he was he, he, he brought up the fifteen dollar minimum wage issue, which is like, OK, this is good. This is a step in the right direction. But adjusted for inflation, the minimum wage um, should be like twenty two dollars, something right. like that. Yeah, because it, <laughs> he's still thinking of the minimum wage being fifteen cents from hmm. nineteen forty seven. So this is actually a huge increase. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm afraid to take it any farther. <laughs> yeah, you would take your fifteen cents down to Tulsi Town. You'd harass the wait staff. That's a <laughs> joke about the new Charlie Kaufman movie. Okay, so. Yeah, let's move on a little bit. I want to get back to fire because there's another yeah. fire story that uh, is close to all of our hearts, I think. There is this, this thing that happened in this small town in Slovenia where Melania Trump is from, where so I guess what they do in this town is they do like wood sculpture stuff. And so when she was um, well, when he when Trump won and then she was became first lady, this guy, I guess he sculpted like a wood sculpture of melania trump and then painted it and so she looks kind of like when you go through the pacific northwest or like a foresty area and you see those shops where they carve like a little bear holding a fish and it's like welcome to our home or whatever right but it's a melania trump well it's been set on fire multiple times by people who live in the town <laughs> because the town became, I guess, like a cottage. No, it's not the word. Like a tourist destination where they all just it's a town of 5000 people is where she's from. So they just started oh. giving Melania Trump tours and stuff and selling Melania Trump knickknacks and shit. But like not everyone who's there is a fan of you know trump right. or like they all know her anything. personally and they're like she steals things <laughs> <laughs> yeah you all... cannot play monopoly with her asks for glick they're trying to make money off of her but not everyone like like people are like oh fuck the trumps and shit so this guy made this statue of her and then someone set it on fire and he salvaged it and there's like you gotta look up pictures of this if you're listening and you're curious about this it's it's like it's just the head got burnt, and so I guess he had, like, painted on her face, but it's just black char from the neck up now, and so, like, he's like, they destroyed her face, and, you know, he's uh, traumatized by it because it was his creation, and so what this artist did is that he and took it, I guess he made a cast of it or something, because he 
unveiled this week a new statue that cannot be destroyed because it's made of bronze, but it's the same shape. And she has her <laughs> arm in the air, so she's waving. So she's all polygonal, and she's bronze, and she has her arm in the air. And also, it could be destroyed. I mean, we destroyed all these statues in like the protests here that are fucking bronze or whatever. But it also just looks like Pazuzu from The Exorcist. If you've ever seen that film, there's like... The reason that the woman in the child in Exorcist is uh, possessed is because they figure out that there's this statue in like South America or Africa or some, some shit somewhere that's just like this demon statue that's got like a snake for a dick and then he's holding one hand in the air and it looks exactly like the new Melania statue. It fucking rules. <laughs> Coincidence? <laughs> I think not. It's got a. It's so tough to have a Melania industry pop up because there's nothing about her to sell. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's frowning and she's next to the president. That's what you have to work with. So you're like, look, that's a lady. It could be her. Come on, well, arm in the air. I mean, maybe this terrifying melania totem is like they're going ghost tour you know because the story of the exorcist is that statue they excavated it and then they broke it when they broke it this demon that was trapped inside of it escaped and then he fucking found his way up to the you know northeast in america and he was inside of this young girl and then she's the, got the devil inside of her right but it's actually mm-hmm. like a demon it's like hereditary like it's a demon mm-hmm. a, a sub de- devil uh <laughs> so sub devil Maybe you know this town in Slovenia that the just the right the knickknack tour isn't really cutting it, and what they're going to sell is haunted Melania tour, where she Ooh. remember how she was wearing that safari hat for a while. She could be like she's she's like an exorcist type figure or something. She's how could I forget that <laughs> <laughs> the many hats it? she's worn. <laughs> that jacket she had, that it, it, what was it? It doesn't really bother me. Does it bother you? Something like that. Yeah, that was spooky. It was like a scary, yeah. like uh, when a like a, a devil writes something on a wall, you know? Yeah, like and it's like cryptic. Yeah, she like, does have kind of a skeletorial. I mean, this is a compliment. Her bone structure is sort of like a skeletorial, you know, uh, appearance. Like, baby, you got a wonderful skeleton. Yeah. You that can is, yeah, you can tell she's <laughs> is, got yeah. those strong strong bones that would be able to withstand a lot of damage if they were to leave the skin and you know go around as a skeleton. Yeah. Those she's got cheekbones. No one can deny it. But I pray that, that that never happens. She clearly has a strong skull. <laughs> she never becomes a skeleton woman roaming Slovenia. I, yeah. I can't stop thinking of like if you were like a street urchin in this town and you still had to like make cash some way and people are coming up and you're like, please, I show you Melania dance. I do Melania dance for you. You make a little, <laughs> little, little bead sculptures of her. Like, TNS Chicle. I have not eaten in three weeks. Please uh, uh, do impression of Melania. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is kind of amazing to me that nothing about her relationship with the president, as far as I know, uh, in the White House has really been leaked because so much shit has, about the Trump administration is just all over. You know, every publication has 10 sources in there. Tell them everything they want. But like well, there's a lot of people are inferring from their, you know, uh, interactions in public that she's not happy. But I haven't seen any like stories about what's actually going on there well there's probably not much of a relationship to leak about you know what i mean yeah. because like they're clearly i i, Cold I dinner th- again at the white yeah. house <laughs> i suspect this of many politicians and many evil people and people that live kind of like house of cards style lives where like their marriage is for political reasons and for, you know, because I mean, the family structure is such that it's built into like, you know, power and bloodlines and all this stuff. I don't think those people fuck is what I'm saying. And I also like, there's a thing with Trump. I kind of think, uh, I kind of a hot take about, and I used to do stand up about back when that was a thing where like the P tape is like, that guy doesn't. Oh, holy shit. The P tape. Remember that? 
I haven't thought of that in 20 years. I don't think it's real. I don't think that Trump is cool enough to enjoy having someone piss on him. And then, you know, what does that scenario look like? He's doing whippets in a hotel room. That's a cool thing to do. That's not what Trump does. Trump fucks three pumps. He comes, he watches TV. You know, he's like not he a good a lover. He's a well-done steak. Yeah. Like, he's a trash, you know? I think he gets peed on. I think his idea of like a really nasty thing to do is get peed on and he's stone cold sober for it. And he's like, it's gross. And it's on Obama's bed. No. <laughs> but if yeah, it's yeah, never come out, that's what I buy about it. Sort of is that it's an Obama thing because, you know, have you seen those videos where it's before he ran for president in like 2012 or something when he was thinking about running and uh, he has a black guy uh show up to his office and he pays him to sit in a chair and he lectures him as if it's <laughs> Obama. <laughs> like he had this like severe hatred, still does, of Obama. So Yeah, yeah. no, believe me, he like I get it. He does petty stuff like that, but it's for show, right? I think that if think he I don't know fucking had someone piss on him on like Obama's bed, maybe that's the reason it's recorded, is because he's what I'm saying is I don't think he was into it. I don't think because he like enjoyed the experience. I think he was just like, wow, we'll make a tape and it'll fucking get him. And then maybe he realized like, oh, wait, this isn't going to get him. It gets me. Right. What's up, everybody? I'm right. Donald Trump and this is peeing on Obama's bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a <laughs> jackass. <laughs> he is a germaphobe. So, yeah, yeah that kind of makes sense. I, I just I, I couldn't. I that was buried in the back of my brain and you brought it out. That's really <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm going to go. I don't think him and Melania fuck. And I don't think they have a relationship. I think it's just like a Absolutely weird. Absolutely not. It's like a job, you know? Is she getting it from anyone else, though? That's what I'm wondering. Mm. <laughs> that yeah, would have been leaked by now. Okay. That that's was. So maybe that's that why she's. Know about. That's why maybe why she's not happy. She's not getting laid. Yeah. Well, Andrews, you sense. sound like you're conspiring to get in there. <laughs> Melania, baby, if you're listening. Yeah. You're in the I'm, same you have a girlfriend. If it's for the revolution, I will do it. <laughs> it's not for the revolution. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No one is asking you to do this. This is your own animal lust taking over. I mean, I got she's on the list. I got uh Nancy Pelosi, uh Christina Añez, my man Olivia who recently said she's not running for re-election. So uh, I don't know what good that would do, but I'm still willing and able. <laughs> uh, can we go back to California for a second? Yeah, let's do that. And oh, then let's wow. round out of here. I got to get out of here. Okay. So um, there's not, I, I don't know if there's a shortage of people to put out these fires or what, but uh, there is. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense because <laughs> Governor Use Newsom, prisoners, remember? <laughs> yeah. Governor Newsom, who has been doing the most ridiculous photo ops over the past week or so, where he's like in this brown jacket, his hair is still like just, you know, a pound of gel in that shit that he's soaked into it. Uh, and it's like he's it's like he came out with a cologne. You know, the, these photo ops look like a cologne ad with Gavin Newsom strutting around like, look at all this fire. Look at the, look at the wreckage. Climate change is real. Um, but he's, and he signed a, a bill. Francisco. Out, what's that? It's a Pablo Francisco trailer. <laughs> yeah. In a world. Okay. <laughs> Gavin. It's called Gavin. That's my new Sarbin. Out of control. <laughs> he really does talk. He talks like, Christian Bale as Batman. Yeah. He's like this. This is, but this is like how he actually talks. He's not even putting it on. When he puts on a Batman that's suit, a he talks like a normal person, like this. Yeah. That's what he needs to do. <laughs> but he, um, he signed a bill out, out there in the forest. He did a photo op of him signing a bill that's uh, going to let prisoners who right now are uh, putting out the fires fighting the fires i guess that they have some sort of relationship with the uh with the state i don't know quite what you'd call that one uh but they are working for free uh but he 
sign this bill that would let them, at least the good ones, uh, s- s- begin earning money once they're out of jail. They would just Huge. have like a nice transition from uh, prison to being a wildfire fighter, which is like pretty convenient. I mean, he can do the nice little, uh, oh, yeah, this is criminal justice reform thing. But like, it's just, just you're just a like- fire slave. You can <laughs> yeah. only fight fires. That's a, like fucking dystopian punishment. <laughs> right. And it's clearly they just need the labor, you know, and they don't have time to like train and hire a bunch of people. Maybe there's not a surplus of people who just want to do that. So they're like basically giving these people an option. I mean, I guess it's better than not having a job, which is what a lot of um ex-cons have to go through well this but, probably uh, came all like it probably it's an advantageous move for him because there was such a viral liberal like specific resistance to that uh that like the law that they couldn't become firemen a- after they got out because it does that is also bad you should have the right. option of using the skills that you learned in this terrible situation but this is a clever f- way of going wait wait a minute yeah let's uh, let them only uh, be firemen you know what i mean <laughs> right the classic lib move i love i love the uh the the like press angle on it of just hey man if you didn't want to have to fight five alarm fires for the rest of your life you shouldn't have been caught smoking weed when you were 19 (laughs) (laughs) which is legal now for everyone else for the family that started the fire with the gender reveal party they sell (laughs) weed they're they smoke weed uh they start fires that you have to fight completely normal system right (laughs) yeah i mean and this guy so like I've kind of viewed him throughout the pandemic as sort of like he's he's a hack, but at least he's a progressive hack. You know, like the interest groups in California that are somewhat left leaning have more institutional power than they do in New York, uh, whereas Cuomo is just a piece of shit. He's just a Republican. Newsom at least seems like maybe he's doing some good stuff. But a lot of it, as I'm discovering now, is really just symbolic. You know, he's talking about this climate change uh, shit as he's, you know, out there in the wildfires. But then he uh, has accepted a ton of money from like polluting industries and really did not go to bat for this particular bill that was going to uh, block oil, um, oil well, uh, excuse me. Jackson oil wells from being like too close to residencies that were, you know, predominantly. Uh, yeah. He approved on like 200 new fracking sites this year. Or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's doing all this stuff under the radar. Um, it's just so weird to do that and then complain about it. Like you're not the governor. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> who's going to, who, who's reading this? He was who's doing do more. The oh same God. thing as like Nancy Pelosi last week when she was like, whatever the fuck that thing was, she was, she was like, pass it on. That someone's got to do something about this. It's like you're Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> pass it on to who? Yeah. Maybe fucking stop calling it the Green Dream or whatever, and actually put together a committee for the thing that we have been asking you to do for years now. Yeah. Uh, but that's and what's babies going on. have a committee. <laughs> but that's going on with him because like this, it's just a system of perpetual growth and especially in the area of land development is just going to cause more and more of this shit. Um, someone who I think the last time there were wildfires in California, like at this scale or approaching the scale was in 2018. And I think back then we talked a little bit about uh, Mike Davis, who wrote a pretty phenomenal essay uh, like 20 years ago called let Malibu burn which made a lot of people mad because his basic contention was these rich people are building these houses in planned communities out in places that should be state parks. And when there are fires, which is just going to happen, especially as, you know, places like California become more arid, they're taking a shitload of resources from the state to put out those fires and to rebuild every few years. Like people already, you know, started rebuilding two years ago and then their houses are getting destroyed again and they can afford it. I mean, it sucks for them, but it's like you don't need to be doing this. Uh, And this is just like the consequence of not 
viewing land as like its own thing and just viewing it as a commodity that you, you need to conquer, you know, cause that goes a long way back in American history of like land we, we need to, and there's all these, these like ideological justifications for it. You know, for a while it was like, God has sent us here to take over this land. And that's what they tried to do with the Everglades in Florida. There was this guy, uh, Hamilton Diston, who was a real estate developer who tried who he purchased 4 million acres in the Everglades and tried to like make it into a development. And it didn't work. Nature was like, fuck you. We're not going to do this. Uh, and it just caused mayhem and disasters and shit. And uh, the same thing, Louisiana is- Jurassic Park. Right. It's yeah, it's a Jurassic Park situation. It's and a Jurassic in Park California, situation. it's really interesting because um, they've also had their own sort of California justification for this stuff. Like, I think it was in the in the 90s. The um, same, but you're skateboarding. Well, yeah. <laughs> in the 90s, they were like, you know, building more developments in these places where Dream there should be built. California and- justification. <laughs> <laughs> Dream, yeah. He's riding but, uh, the that the remember in the video when he's riding that dragonfly around the city. Yeah, it's that shouldn't be done. That's unnatural, but that's part of the ideology. Is you it's not natural. Yeah, <laughs> but their big thing in the '90s for a while was like uh, the impediment to us building these developments are gangs, but also gangs of coyotes. <laughs> uh, that's a big problem and we got to yeah. take out these coyotes They're it's not, a problem you know, in the coyote community because of the fathers are around and then you know there's <laughs> they're selling drugs they're selling they're drugs selling drugs because they don't have access to resources You're getting sexed into the pack <laughs> yeah. right. you're getting a little tattoos and stuff <laughs> yeah but basically this comes back to we need a planned economy that applies to real estate. You know, we can't just let these firms make fucking housing wherever they want luxury housing and developments like it needs to be done responsibly. And the systems we have now, the ecology we have now needs to be maintained in a responsible way. And a lot of this stuff we know from uh, indigenous people who've been doing these this for you know thousands of years uh, because um, the land is changing, you know, uh, as climate change advances, we're seeing more and more fires and we're seeing more and more plants that adapt and live off of fire. And we've seen this happen in other parts of the world. In Germany, after the Second World War, um, they expected oh, oh just our, our, our old plants are just going to grow back like they were in you know 1930. It's going to be exactly the same. And it didn't happen. They got, you know, the large parts of Germany were just blown up and you had this like, scorched earth. And what happened is plants that people had in their personal gardens and shit just like spilled over and got out and grew. And they, you have these like strange exotic plants in Germany now because of the bombing and it's messed with their ecosystem. And that's going to happen here. We're going to get the vegetation and all that shit is going to get fucked. It's going to like the, as I always you know think about with climate change, it's not really about the earth. It's about us, you know, like humans are, if humans go extinct, the earth is going to be fine. It'll take a little, like a few thousand years to readapt, which is like a blink of the eye in earth years, you know, and then it'll just go back to developing its own ecosystem. But if we want a sustainable, you know, uh, atmosphere and environment and society, then we have to pay attention to this stuff and we need to, uh, take land management seriously and do it in a responsible way and also bring back the fucking forest reserve. You know, in the thirties, they had all those dudes who were sent out to the forest to take care of sick trees and do plant burns and all that shit. We need to do that and give people, you know, jobs doing this stuff and and not just, you know, prisoners who are basically forced into it, like people who get paid well and have, you know, uh, autonomy in the, in their work. What if there was like a firefighting uh, gig economy app that you could download, and it's <laughs> also called Tinder because you know <laughs> it's about fire, and then you okay. match with a tree that you go to save from a fire, and you get paid. You know, depending on what the tree wants to tip you, which is 
not built into the system very well and you're an independent yeah. contractor so that you know you have to provide your own firefighting gear and it's not really like <laughs> you know it's, it's like it's not really work that they don't have to pay it's on the horizon right, right. It's going to happen. These women, they go swiping for trees, and then you get to their profile, and it says if you're under six feet tall, like <laughs> left. And it's like, who's going to save those trees? Yeah, who's going to save those little Charlie Brown Christmas trees? True. There's something wrong with that tree all of a sudden? All right. Well, uh, just on a time crunch, I got to get out of here, so we got to end the show. But um, okay. just if you are a listener and you want to start the PDA uh, library, uh, I the the... The fascism, Fasci root word stuff I learned in the anti-fascist handbook, which was written by Mark Bray, who's been a guest on this show. So I'm going to cite to that and I'll link some other stuff. And uh, yeah, just go ahead and throw Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy on this episode's uh, you know page. Right. Pretend like we've all read it. Um, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do start a competing about library. Dating. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. I'm not going to start this library. I'm asking for whoever runs the Joe Rogan one to just also do this for our show. So any we it just any book we mention. So I could literally just say Confederacy of Dunces right now and it'll just be. Yeah, on. actually, okay. you, you yeah. could make this person's job very hard if you just freestyled like 10, 20 right. books because they would have to link them all. War and Peace. There's no time. There's just no time. Oh, yeah. Tolstoy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, crime and Punishment. It's a big book. Brothers Karamazov. Notes mm -hmm. from Underground. Yeah. I've got, I'm doing Russian books, of course. Of course. Fed into my brain. Okay, the let's Bible. get... Put the Bible on there. Everything I say is from the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, Satanic Bible. What do you think of that? There you go. The Anarchist the book. The Islamic Bible. The regular... Whatever that one's called. Quran. <laughs> Put it on there. We're an equal opportunity podcast. The Anarchist Torah. Cookbook. The regular I might, cookbook. I might be converting to the Torah, actually. My girlfriend has her way. Oh, did we start plugs? Let's, uh, yeah, let's do plugs and get out of here. No, they start now. Uh, at Anders Lee here on Twitter. Dursley1 on Instagram. And um, if you're in L.A., uh, please check out our friends No Olympics L.A., um, they're doing a lot of great work that you can get involved in. And, uh, I I'm looking here now on Sunday, they're doing trivia. Um, uh, they have like a Twitch stream for it. It's from eight to 10 PM. That specific time. And it looks like a lot of fun. Go to um, at N Olympics LA. If you want to find out more. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Patak jokes, P T A K jokes. And, um, if you're Jewish, talk to Anders, call Anders, message Anders, give him the information he needs to make this transition seamlessly. Thank you. Yes. Um, tough. Also, oh, yeah. Tough. Uh, what are you supposed to say for Rosh Hashanah? Somebody told me it earlier and I don't remember it. Uh, that's not it. It's, um, it's hey, Naomi. something entirely what do you alien say to me. For Rosh Hashanah. Uh, Sh Naomi. Sh Shoshana from girls to it? you. Shoshana from girls. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. There you go. Shoshana from girls. Shoshana from girls to you. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Go ahead and oh yeah, I'm at Feral Jokes. I, if you don't know, you listen to our show just because you came across it. Um, I am very angry on Twitter. You can follow it and watch. It's very fun. Um, I also have another podcast called Why You Mad. You should listen to it. I just did an episode about co-ops and uh, the comedy club and whether it can be co-opted by the co-op. Um, I'm very proud of this project. You should listen to it. And what you should do if you enjoy it and this show is go into iTunes and rate and review us with five stars because, uh, you know, I have a lot of internet, uh, enemies. And so they keep fucking up our show <laughs> and I gotta make some money. Right. So we gotta continue to advertise this show. So go ahead and, rev uh, please review, uh, subscribe all that shit give us five stars and give my other show five stars and uh if you are a listener and you would like some merch we sell bandanas and shirts and shit like that <clears throat> and uh we have a merch store linked in our episode notes and bio and all that crap and um i'm doing a show on october 7th with um <clears throat> I'll advertise it better in the next one, but it's a live streaming thing. It, you can follow me, and I'll I'll tweet about it and stuff. I'm gonna do Zoom stand up at some fucking point. 
Um, nice. I think that's it. It's finished. Shoshana from Girls. Shoshana from Girls.